Hi, and welcome to VFX Lunchbox. Uh, today's uh, quick tip, we're going to focus on creating displacements to generate kind of motion on 2D objects, in this case a tree, we're going to generate that leaf motion uh, to kind of give ourselves a little bit more realism or a little bit more believability on 2D imagery. So let's go ahead and start. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create a very quick noise control so we could actually control an iDistort node um, to create a natural tree movement. In this case, we can make it as fast as we can, the movement itself, or we can make it as slow as we can as well to kind of give that sense of the leaves moving. So let's go ahead and start. Um, for this, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, bring an image of a tree or, or anything else that you need. So let's go ahead and duplicate this image. And then um, for this, we're going to take the image itself. We need to pre-multiply it. So let's go ahead and add a permult node. And the next thing that we need to do is we're going to go ahead and create an eye distort node. By itself, the eye distort node doesn't know what to do uh, with that data. It doesn't know what to actually use. Um, so essentially what we need to do is we need to create a UV channels for the purpose of distortion. So that way we could actually go ahead and distort uh, the object specific amount on the areas that we want to create the sensation of movement. So for this, what we need to do is create a first noise. And this noise actually is going to be in my red channel. So I'm going to create a, no a red channel noise and a green channel noise. And both of them are going to have different properties. So the first one, actually, I'm going to call this one branch. And I'm going to control the movement of the branches. And for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my specific property. And I want it to be exactly the same size as my object. So in this case, my object is 1024 by 1024. So if we we're going to create a gizmo out of this, I want to have a control for that format. So let's go ahead and put a reformat node. And let's connect the noise pattern to that reformat node and set that reformat to 1024 by 1024 or square 1K. And this is if your image is that size. If it's a different size, you set the reformat to another size. But that's why I have this here. So if I create a gizmo, it's a lot easier for me to change the format on the fly. Uh, for any image that's coming in. So now that we have that and we have the first noise, what we're going to do is very subtle animation. You could do this animation based on keyframes or you could do an expression based on Z. So the idea of this is the scale of, imagine you're at the wind, right? And we want to move these uh, giant branches that have all these leaves. So what we want to do is we want to control the scale of this. So it looks like when we're displacing these giant areas, what they will do is they will move the whole tree as if it was branches moving on the wind instead of just the individual leaves. So that's the first thing that we're going to create. And then for this, let's go ahead and set a quick animation. Let's set a keyframe on the Z uh, movement in there, so yeah, axis, and let's say go to 100, and let's put the movement to, let's say, 1.7. Um, so essentially what we're going to get is something like this, okay? So it's going to create the subtle wind on the branches, and it's going to move the, the chunks of branches, the big ones. I'm going to scale it just slightly larger so it gives me a, a little bit more like a bigger tree type of look. The next thing is I'm going to duplicate that after we have done the animation. I'm going to link it again to the same um, reformat node. And this one is going to be my leaves. Okay. But instead of the red, we're going to say the green channel. Okay. And I like to colorize these guys just to keep them a little bit more organized so I know which one is my red and which one is my green. So let's go ahead and do that very quickly. And now that I have this guy in, this guy is going to be my leaf. So we're going to go ahead and scale the size really small. So make sure to double click on that and then scale the size extremely small, kind of to the size of a leaf in real, in real world, um, in the sense of the tree that we have in there. And I'm going to play around a little bit with the settings so it actually moves my leaves a little bit differently there. So when we hit play, you're going to see the animation going. And this is going to give me the subtle leaf motion that is on the inside. Now the next thing that I have to do is combine both. So shuffle, copy, or copy note, either or will work. And what I need to do is I'm going to connect both of them. And what I need to do is make sure that um, the one that I'm using, the red channel, input one, I'm using just a red channel of that one. So this is the image that we're going to get. So if we change this to red, we're going to see that noise. If we change it to green, we're going to see that noise. Now, the other channels, we don't need them, like the alpha or the blue. So we could turn those off if you need to. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to find a way of copying that data, that red and that green, into our stream so you could use it as UV channels for the eye distort. So that's very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to create a copy node. 
And with a copy node, we're going to pipe it in and we're going to connect a new channel. So we're going to create a new channel set in this case. So for my new channel set is very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my viewer very quick. You could also do it on the copy node and say new. And I'm going to call this channel I distort for the distortion that I'm going to do. Uh, you can name it anything that you want. It doesn't matter. Uh, and I'm going to say on new and on V. Uh, so these are the two channels that I want inside that channel set. I'm going to hit OK. And you're going to see that it jumps right away into that channel set and it's completely empty because we still haven't piped in the data into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the red channel and the green channel that we created on the shuffle copy area and we're going to pipe that in into the iDistort U and the iDistort V. Then when we actually look at the iDistort, of course, now we have some data in there that is actually in the iDistort channel. So now we're ready to use that data further into the distortion of our trees. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add the distortion here. So we're going to go to the iDistort node and we're going to use our iDistort channel. Select that and increase the scale. And now you can see what is getting affected by that specific channel. So just give it a nice uh, big number so you can see the effect and then you can scale it back down. But essentially that's about it. Um, now that we have that, we're going to hit play very quickly to kind of see a little bit of the feedback of it. Usually we isolate the areas that are solid using rotoscope nodes or keys or whatever you decide to do. But for this one, what I'm going to do is the eye distortion node, you see that we get a very nice tree motion. The eye distort node has an input mask in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new roto node. And I'm going to connect that roto to the same uh, reformat. Okay, so that means if I create this again as a gizmo, I'm able to actually just pipe it into that format. And with this roto, what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the motions, the things that I want to be hard versus non-hard. So I'm going to do just one area here. Um, it doesn't need to be a perfect roto, just something that isolates the areas that we want. And I'm going to also select probably a couple of these branches here that I don't want them distorting or anything like that. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to be a perfect roto just to give the illusion that some areas are going to be static and some are not. Um, so, yep. So we could do that very quick. And then the next thing is if I hit play right now, you're going to see that the actual tree is the one distorting. So we want the leaves. Now you could invert your shapes or I'm just going to do it for the purpose of visual. You could do it internally on the I distort or in the roto. But I'm going to put an invert node there before it goes into the mask. And now we're going to see that the distortion is happening on the leaves and not on the uh, on the trunks in the areas that we actually isolated. So that's essentially it. That's uh, a Nuke's quick tip. And um, if you want to add more variations to that, we could add falling leaves, for example. So it's a very simple variation where we could actually go ahead and create a noise to generate just falling leaves. And very quickly, we could add some animation to that let's go ahead and lower the quality here very quick and you can see we could generate falling, le falling leaves just very quickly by using a reformat and noise a multiply to adjust the coloring of that noise and then a roto to isolate where the actual leaves are falling and that's very quickly we have the nice subtle motion of the tree plus the leaves and falling now, if we want to add another variation also using noise and displacements um, what we could do is we could also create a reflection so for the water reflection, usually we use the original, whatever we want to distort. So if we have everything with falling leaves and reflection, so let's go ahead and use uh, that area there. So <clears throat> let's move this down very quickly. And let's go ahead and connect this to what we want to reflect. So essentially what we're going to get is something like this. Well, we have a reflection and also we use a variation of the water noise. In this case, what I'm generating is um, the same idea. A red pattern, but I squash the noise to create this water ripple effect. Then I use a duplicate of that to create the specs. So if I'm looking at the channel, I will create the specs of the water as well. And this create a very nice water ripple effect. Then I use a directional blur to actually blur the data that I got in. And then uh, I use the same idea. I copy the channels in into a new channel set that is called water distort. I distort it to create the water motion. And then I grade it a little bit and I add the specular highlight into those. And then from there, just comp it in into the rest of your comp. And that's another way that you could create a very quick uh, water reflection gizmo. So if we hit play and we look at the whole thing as one unit, let's go ahead and hit play here. And let's wait for it to cache.
And there we go. Now we have a very cool technique on how to create a tree moving some dropping leaves and the same technique could be used to create reflections and water ripples and so on and so forth. So I hope you liked this new quick tip and see you next time on the next VFX Launchbox. This is Pedro Flores. Bye-bye.